All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my backyard. I've got uh, one of, well, no, not one of. I have the most special certificate in my entire I Love Me binder that I want to share with you guys today. We're going to break this one down into three episodes, but this is it. This is the hardest one that I earned, all right? This certificate right here holds a lifetime worth of stories, lessons learned, uh, personal growth and development. Literally, this course helped shape me into the man that I am today, more so than any other training pipeline I have ever went through, all right? This is my graduation certificate from Basic Underwater Demolition SEAL Training Class 278, otherwise known as BUDS. Most of you guys have probably heard of BUDS. BUDS is the selection uh, training pipeline that every SEAL must go to uh, in order to proceed and go to SQT. So we're backing up now. We're talking about BUDS. Uh, you guys saw the last video on SQT. BUDS comes before SQT. It is literally the hardest thing that I've ever done was BUDS. It's six months long, broken into three phases. Uh, it is the one thing in my life that not only lived up to, but exceeded my expectations for what I thought it was going to be. You guys know how so many things in life you, you kind of build it up in your mind to be something that's going to be really spectacular. Maybe it's a place, maybe it's an activity, and you get there and it's not really what you, what you thought it was going to be. It's not really as hard or as spectacular or as special as you thought it was going to be. <laughs> Buds ain't that way. Buds is everything and more than you could ever imagine. You literally can't even get a grasp on it without enduring the process that is buds that's the only way to understand what it is and um gosh so much so much happened in this six months of my life uh, we're going to talk about first phase today first phase is about eight weeks long about eight weeks long and it's where most of the guys quit we started buds class 278 with 300 men handpicked from American society. We graduated with about 15. Most of those guys we lost in first phase, the large majority of them. It's the selection phase. Um, you start out with NDOC, gear issue. You show up to Coronado Island, the training command there. It's, it's just, uh, it's hard to describe what it's like to actually be there and know that you're about to embark on the hardest training in the world. And uh, you get your gear issue, and you start NDOC. One of the things I remember most about NDOC was wetsuit appreciation. All of your swims in NDOC are done in the San Diego Bay. If you guys have never swam in the San Diego Bay, then you probably don't know that it's always cold, always freezing cold. Uh, part of your gear issue is a wetsuit. Um, well, they let us swim with our wetsuit a few times at NDOC, and then they sent us out into the water for about a, a mile and a half swim with no wetsuit. I like to froze to death on that swim, I think along with all my classmates. And uh, you never took your wetsuit for granted after that wetsuit appreciation swim. Um, NDOC was fast paced. We lost a lot of guys. We moved from NDOC and we finally class up after about two weeks for day one of first phase. Now, uh, first phase, uh, things that change, you have performance standards that you have to meet. I wanna talk through those in a little while. And another thing about first phase is everywhere you go, you run everywhere. You run at least six miles a day just to eat chow. So it's at least a mile to the chow hall and a mile back three times a day. That's six miles a day just to eat food. That doesn't include all the other training that you do throughout the day. So this is where I learned 
to be a really good long distance runner was in buds. I have no clue how many miles you run in buds. I would say it would be well over 500, probably closer to a thousand. Um, but everywhere you run, you have something called an IBS, inflatable boat small. Uh, and you run with that boat on your head. Uh, I ran so long with that boat on my head that I actually went bald on the top of my head. That boat, I ran so many miles with that boat on my head, it wore a hole in the top of the hat that I was wearing and rubbed the hair off the top of my head. I'm being serious. Everywhere you went, you ran with this freaking boat. Um... Running with a boat on your head is interesting too because there are three positions. You've got the front spot, you've got the number two spot which is in the middle, and you've got the number three spot which is in the back. The number two spot is way harder than the number one or the number three spot. All right? When you're in that number two spot, it literally feels like someone has a massive hammer and they're driving you into the sand like a nail. I actually got in a fight with one of my teammates running under a boat one time. Uh, he was a really cocky officer. And in Buds, you go through, through training with officers and enlisted side by side. And uh, I was in number two spot getting hammered into the sand. I couldn't move fast enough to make him happy. He was in the number three spot, man. Of course he could move faster than me. He got a little upset with me, got, got a little sass. We stepped out from under the boat, had a little fight. They let you fight in Buds too, by the way. Isn't that awesome? They actually let you fight. You don't get in trouble for it. We had our little fight. We got over it, settled our differences, got back under the boat, continued mission. I think the instructors actually liked to watch us fight. We were usually so tired we couldn't actually hurt each other. So it probably just looked more like us rolling around in the sand. <laughs> That's probably more what it looked like. Um, you do log PT in buds. Log PT, you have sections of telephone poles and uh, they make you do uh, squats holding the telephone poles, push them over your, he over your head, uh, lunges, uh, just until exhaustion, right? You, 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 it doesn't matter how strong you are. They're going to make you lift the logs until you can't lift the log anymore. And then they have special logs. They have one log called Old Misery. Uh, Old Misery is a log that's about twice the size of the normal log that you would use. So they would beat you until you could no longer lift the normal log and then they would give you old misery and really make you feel like a turd uh, when you tried to lift old misery and you couldn't even get it up off the sand. They also had a log that was split into individual sections and the sections were chained together. Um, and this log was because some boat crews you would have guys that weren't really pushing their weight, right? And when the log's in one section, it's hard to tell who's not really carrying their weight. But when they bring this sectioned log out that's chained together, everybody in the boat crew has their own section of log. And you can really then see who's not pushing their weight, right? They could do a lot of interesting things with log PT. Uh, one log PT, we had to walk and lunge that log for four miles in the soft sand. Uh, during that evolution, I actually lost one of my close teammates. He got overheated, and uh, I, I saw him on the side of the berm there. He was acting like he was drunk, kind of flailing around. I didn't know what was wrong with him. He had a heat stroke and uh, nearly passed away. They drug him out of there in an ambulance, and uh, he never recovered from that. But uh, he did end up living. Uh, that was a really tough, tough evolution. Um, you have the O course in buds. The O course is one of the standards that you have to hit. The hardest thing on the O course was a tower. Uh, you had to climb up this tower. You got to the top of it. You're probably, I don't know, 50, 60 feet in the air. And at the top of the tower, there's a rope. And the rope is attached at the top and it goes down at an angle back down to the ground. They call it the slide for life. All right. Once you get to the top of the tower, you have to slide down this rope to get down off of it. Now you don't have any harnesses, you're not attached to anything, you slide down this rope. We lost a lot of dudes on the slide for life because if you fall off the top of that rope, you're going to break something. We called them sand darts, sand darts. I can't tell you how many guys broke their collarbones, their femurs, their legs, shattered their pelvis, falling off the slide for life. 
when they'd fall off, they'd haul them away in an ambulance and we'd just continue training. It, ne it, ne it never stopped, man, never stopped. Um, we had four mile timed runs. This was on the beach in front of uh, the barracks there on Coronado Island. All the runs were done in soft sand, long pants. Uh, I never really struggled with the runs. Interesting thing about everything you do in buds while we're talking about the run is I say a four mile time to run, that's four nautical miles. Two mile time swim, that's two nautical miles. A nautical mile is longer than a land mile. So four mile time to run is really more or less a five mile run. Standard in first phase was 32 minutes. I never really struggled with the runs, but I always stayed middle of the pack. This was my strategy in buds. The instructors actually didn't even know I existed until about third phase when everybody else had quit and I could no longer stay middle of the pack, right? I never came in first on a run. I never came in last on a run. You didn't want to come in first because then the spotlight was on you. You didn't want to come in last because if you were in the back of the pack on those runs, you got to be part of something called the goon squad. All right? You didn't want to be in the goon squad, man, because the goon squad they would just stop those guys and they would just hammer them all the way back. Bear crawls, low crawls, in the surf, you name it. Never wanted to be in the goon squad. Middle of the pack was the place to be on those runs. Um, you go through first phase for about four weeks and then week five is hell week. Hell week is unbelievably difficult. It is it takes you to the very limit of your capabilities. Um, when I say the word limit, I, I literally mean your limit. Like, if you went much further, you would die. Uh, you hit your limit multiple times in buds, but most especially in Hell Week. Uh, Hell Week starts on a Sunday. You break out of these tents Sunday night, and it's complete chaos. Bombs going off, flashbangs, guns, complete chaos, and it starts. And the chaos never stops for an entire week. You do everything you were doing the first four weeks, but you don't get to sleep. That's what makes Hell Week unique, is you're awake the entire time. My hallucination started on about day three of Hell Week. We had just got done with an evolution called Around the World. Uh, that night, we spent all night running with the boats on our heads all around the base, doing crazy stuff, races. Uh, it, was, it was a long, long night, and we were tired. That morning, on day three, I was out in front of the chow hall in the push-up position because if you're standing still in Hell Week, you're probably in the push-up position. And I looked back up under my right arm and I thought the sky was falling on me. The hallucination started and they never stopped after that. Uh, I saw some of the craziest stuff during Hell Week that I can't even describe to you because it doesn't make any sense. I walked up to my medic when those hallucinations started and I said, hey man, I think the sky's falling on me. Uh, am I all right? And he looked me back in my eyes and said, do you want to quit? And that's all, all, he, that's all he gave me. And I didn't want to quit, so I went back and got back in the push-up position and carried on. Um, last day of Hell Week, you do something called Around the World. Uh, around the World was super difficult. You paddle the circumference of Coronado Island uh, while stopping at certain intervals and getting beat, having to do exercises like rocking chairs. Uh, rocking chair is where you sit in waist deep water and you flip backwards until your feet hit the sand behind your head. You come back forward. It causes you to choke, essentially. Water goes down your nose and down the back of your throat and chokes you the entire time. Um, during Around the World, I had team members in my boat think that uh, they, were, they would scream and yell, stop, stop, stop and it's because they were seeing spikes in the water and they thought we were about to pop our boat and um, guys seeing mermaids and, and just the craziest crap you could ever dream of in your life because at this point we had been awake for five days. Uh, Hell Week secures and you get a weekend off after Hell Week. Yeah, you don't get any a round of applause, you don't get a pat on the back. 
uh, they tell you, all right, go back to your room, try to get some rest. Your body hurts so bad after Hell Week that you literally can't sleep. The pain is so bad that you cannot sleep. You sleep in about 15 minute intervals um, and you pull your mattress off your bunk bed and you put your mattress on the ground because uh, you can't get up into your bunk bed. You, 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 you can't, you just, your body is destroyed. And um, by Sunday, you can actually get up and walk around a little bit. And uh, on Monday, they start Hydro Hell Week. Hydro Hell Week is, uh, goes back to the roots of the UDT teams, the roots of the SEAL teams. And it's where you go out and you map the bottom of the ocean and you come back in and you chart it out. So you take soundings, you come back in the classroom, you chart it out. You have to do one chart per day during Hydro Hell Week. It takes about 20 hours to do a chart. That's why they call it Hydro Hell Week. You're not getting beat, but you're still not sleeping. A weekend of rest and then straight into another week of no sleep. And that's Hydro Hell Week. Uh, you know, for me to, to try to portray to you the difficulty of, of first phase of BUDS is absolutely impossible. Um, I could spend two hours telling you story after story. Um, you know, we haven't even mentioned surf torture. Sur surf torture was my least favorite thing in first phase because I hated the cold. I still hate the cold to this day. And uh, surf torture would go on for hours where you lay in the surf zone as the waves wash over you and uh, until you get hypothermia. You just freeze, they freeze you to death essentially while the fine sand churns up and fills every orifice of your body, including your ears and your butt crack and every pocket you have. And um, once you get hypothermic, they pull you out of the water and make you run, warm up, and then they surf torture you some more. Uh, so literally I cannot portray the difficulty to its full extent, but I will tell you it shaped me into uh, something that I could have never been in terms of mental toughness and grit and tenacity. It shaped those parts of me and I don't believe there's anything else in the world that could have done a better job than first phase of BUDS. So on the next video, we'll talk about second phase. And if you think BUDS gets any easier in second phase, you're wrong, right? You're wrong. We lose a ton of guys in second phase, and I'm going to tell you guys the stories of second phase on the next video. So appreciate you tuning in. Enough said.